guys, welcome back to the Avena Knit Along. In this video today, I am going to talk to you all about short rows. Now, the short rows that we are using in this pattern are German short rows, which involve a double stitch, which is different from uh, traditional short rows, which use a wrap and turn. So this is definitely going to be skill building for you. Um, I love doing German short rows. They are absolutely so much fun. Um, but before I jump into the demonstration, I just want to kind of explain what short rows are are in case you are brand new to them. So let's take a look. All right, so I'm just going to draw you a little diagram here. Okay, so first of all, this is our collar so far, okay? So this is our neck, and we've done the collar all the way around, and it is exactly the same all the way around at the moment. So this is where our stitch marker is right there. Okay, now you guys can't tell yet, but as you go along, you'll realize that this is the back where the stitch marker is. And this over here is going to be the front. So here's what's going to happen with the short rows. You are right here getting ready to start the short rows and you're going to be knitting this way. So in your pattern, it tells you a certain amount of stitches that you need to knit. So you're going to knit, uh, for example, the first size is 52 stitches. All right, so we're going to go this direction for 52 stitches. And then we're gonna perform a double stitch here and turn around. So now we're actually gonna go the other way. So now it tells you to knit or, or purl back to the uh, end of round marker. And then you're gonna continue purling 52 stitches this way. I'll do 52 here. And then we're gonna do a double stitch over here. Then you're going to knit back to the center round Okay, where your stitch marker is. Then you're gonna go this way and it'll be slightly less stitches. Then you're gonna do a double stitch turn and then you're gonna purl all the way back to the marker and then keep purling back here, less stitches. And then you're gonna do a double stitch. So as you make, sorry, this drawing is a little bit terrible, but basically what's happening here, and this looks like a lot of bulk because my drawing is terrible, but really it's only, let's see, there's I think six short rows. Yeah, there's only four short, short rows. So you go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So it's really only about eight rows that you're adding. But the point is that you are adding bulk to the back of the sweater and you're doing nothing to the front. Now, the reason why this shaping is so important is because, for example, the little shirt that I'm wearing, it feels like it has a scoop neck, but the neck on the back of, of my shirt goes up this direction. If we did not do the short rows, on the back of this sweater, you would have a big scoop out of the back and that just kind of looks weird. So basically what you're doing is when you add these rows, it pushes all of the collar upward and it will cover and it'll come hit the back of your neck where a normal shirt should hit. Um, so that's basically what the short row shaping is for. That way you don't have a weird scoop neck in the back. It looks more like a regular sweater fit rather than a scoop neck in the front and a matching scoop neck in the back. So that's exactly what short rows are for. Now let's do a demonstration and figure out how to make this happen in this Avena sweater. All right, here is my end of round marker, and I basically have to knit a certain amount of stitches for my size, and then I'm gonna stop and turn and do a double stitch. So I'm gonna just quickly knit to that point, and I'll be right back with a demo of the double stitch. Okay, I have now knit my prescribed amount of stitches and it's time to turn the work. So I'm gonna turn this over. So now we can see the backside. 
And this is the result of catching all the floats as you go. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so you want to make sure that your yarn is in front as soon as you turn. Okay, so my yarn is currently in the front of my work. It is not back here on the back of the work. It is in front, okay? So now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass the attached stitch from one needle to the other. And by attached, I mean the one that is attached to my working yarn. So that's this stitch right here. So I'm just gonna pass it from one needle to the other without twisting it, okay? Now I'm going to tug my yarn upward on this stitch. If I leave my yarn down, it's just one stitch. But if I pull, the legs of the stitch below come up and it looks like it's two stitches now, right? Okay, so now that I have distorted this stitch and made it look weird, it's time for me to start purling again. But if I just start purling like this, it basically undoes everything I've done. So I wanna make sure that that stitch stays stretched. So I'm going to bring my yarn back to the front of the work just like that. See how that stitch stays all weird looking like that? Now I can continue to purl back to the beginning of the round marker like it says. So I'm just gonna stop here for a minute. And if you look at this stitch, these three stitches are pearls right here. These are pearls over here too. And then there's this like weird looking guy here. It almost looks like a mistake. See that? You know how if you forget to yarn over when you knit or before you purl and you get that little knot? That is exactly correct. It should look weird. And we're gonna pick it up in a later step, but we'll get there in a bit. Okay, so now my job is to purl to my beginning of round marker, and then I'm gonna pass the marker, and then I'm going to purl another um, prescribed amount of stitches. The smallest size here is another 52, so it's exactly the same amount of stitches past the marker as this past one. So let me get there, and I will show you how to perform a double stitch on the purl side. Okay, so this is my last stitch. I've gone past my beginning of round marker, which is over here, and I've purled the prescribed amount of stitches, and now it's time for me to turn the work. So now I'm going to carefully flip this whole thing over, and it's time for me to perform a double stitch. So the very first step is to make sure your yarn is in front. Naturally, because I am knitting on this side and I have pearls on the other side, my yarn is in back. So I wanna make sure it's in the front, so I'm gonna bring it up to the front. And then the next step is to pass the prescribed, or the attached stitch right here over to the other needle. So I'm going to just move it over just like that, okay? Easy peasy. Now, again, I'm going to tug upward to stretch this crazy stitch out so that it pulls up the legs. See how I now have two pieces of yarn right there? And now I need to start knitting the other direction. Now, I'm not purling. Remember last time we did this? We brought it around to the front so that we could purl so that this will stay stretched. We don't have to do that on the front side. All you have to do is pull it tight like this and then if you just knit the next stitch like normal, boom, it keeps that stitch in place. Okay, so let me knit a couple. And let's take a look at what we've done. So we've got three knit stitches right there. Those look pretty nice. These all look like knit stitches over here. And then there's this dude. That looks like a mistake. See, it still has that same weird knotted thing at the top, even though you did this from the other side. So that is a double stitch. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna continue to follow all of the short rows until all of the double stitches are done. So I'm gonna go do mine and then I'll be right back so we can look at how to pick them up uh, when we finish and we start working in the round again when we're done with our short row shaping. 
Okay, so I have finished up all of my short rows and I am now at the part where I'm going to knit around even and I'm going to close the short row gaps as I go. So I'm going to show you how easy this is. Now over here, you can, if I kind of spread this out, you can see where all the short row gaps are and all these weird little stitches are. I mean, they're pretty crazy, right? All right, so here's how we are going to knit one whole round and get rid of those weird little stitches. Okay, so I have a short row, uh, or a double stitch right there. So I am going to just knit the one before. All right, so now I have to knit this double stitch. It is awkward, it is weird, it looks funny, but you know what, I don't care. I'm gonna knit both of these crazy little legs, I'm gonna scooch myself under there, and I'm just gonna knit both of them together as if they were one. Done, that's it. So now I'm gonna knit a few more stitches and get to the next one. And then I'm going to grab this guy under both legs and knit that crazy little mess as if it was just one stitch. Now I'm gonna knit to the next one. I've got four of these. And then I'm just gonna duck under, knit these together as if they were one. And then come to the final one. And I'm going to knit these together just like that as well. So now my short rows are completed and the gaps are all gone. So let's just kind of take a look and see what we did. So you can see here we have, and if I could spread this whole thing out, we have a crescent piece of the main color here that we have added for shaping all the way around. Now if I come to the front, the front is still where we ended off here because we've just been working on the back side. Oh, it's just, they're the coolest things, these short rows. Now, if I follow the front all the way around to this side over here, I still have short rows. Where are they? Over here that I have to pick up, that I'll pick up. And again, you're just gonna encounter them and you're gonna knit these two legs together as if they were one, that's it. So once I get all the way around, all of my double stitches will be picked up and then I'm done with my short row shaping. So that's it for this video, but in the next video, we're gonna talk about how to measure the yoke to make sure that it's long enough before we separate the sleeves. So I'll see you there.